Hey guys and welcome to a brand new video here on FBL Now. Today we're going to be going over my team selection for game week 8 and the transfers that I'm thinking of making. So if you're excited for the video, make sure to drop a like down below. Leave a comment, what are your plans for your team for game week 8? Subscribe if you're brand new and let's get into the video. So, starting things off, in goal we do have Raya, who does have Bournemouth away. Quite a tricky fixture, to be fair, especially after they didn't keep a clean sheet against Leicester or Southampton. Bournemouth was the one that, you know, it's still a potential clean sheet, but I was definitely expecting some from the previous two games. But, of course, we all know how those went. So, we, have now, we now have Bournemouth away, and then, of course, Liverpool at home, Newcastle away, and then Chelsea away as well. So, some pretty tough fixtures coming up from a defensive standpoint from Arsenal, but... Again, we know how good their defence can be. We need them to sort it out so I can start finally getting some points from Arsenal defence because I haven't really had any this season because this is the first time I've owned any Arsenal defence. And then last season, I think I like wildcarded all of them out and then they just kept keeping clean sheets. So I don't know if I'm just cursed with Arsenal defence and getting actual points, but I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but hopefully we do get something from this Bournemouth away fixture. And you know, I'm just hoping for some sort of clean sheet or at least a penalty save or something like that from Ray. I don't want all of this like hype that I've been giving him just to be all for nothing because he's been so good until I brought him in. But either way, Bournemouth away for Raya. At the back, we currently have Trent, who's got Chelsea at home, uh, Milenkovic, who's got Crystal Palace at home, and then also Gabriel, who's got Bournemouth away. So I am playing double Arsenal defence this week. I, I mean, Bournemouth is a, a tough fixture. They have just obviously lost to, I think they just lost to Leicester. So, you know, they, they are very, very attacking, but they did, you know, they didn't score against Leicester. So it's it's one of those things because Leicester's numbers are so bad. It might have just been a bad day at the office. It probably was. But at the same time, my only other options is uh, Mikolenko, who's got Ipswich away, who potentially is still injured uh, by the time that the, uh, the game week eight deadline rolls around. And then I've also got Greaves, who's got Everton at home, which doesn't really help out because I have an Everton attacker. So it just makes sense from a kind of, I guess as high as possible ceiling point of view to just play my double Arsenal uh, defence this week. And then I'm obviously going to play Milenkovic. Crystal Palace at home is a really good fixture for Forrest. Again, our defensive numbers have been really, really good this season. Nuno Ball has absolutely sorted itself out with our back line. And Milenkovic, I just think, is a threat on set pieces as well. We all saw him got the assist uh, in the last fixture against Chelsea. Would have got an assist in the fixture before that as well, but Chris Wood was just offside. So I'm absolutely fine having him in those dangerous positions and just hopefully can get me something. I mean, maybe a clean sheet, but an attacking return is also very, very likely for this player as well. And I've also got Trent at the moment as well. Again, I don't really know what I'm going to do with Trent. I'm just kind of seeing what happens with injuries and stuff because obviously Saka limped off, potentially a hamstring injury uh, in the game against Greece last night. So obviously I'm going to be talking about that today. But again, if, if things like that happen and I have to start using transfers on other players, I'm fine keeping Trent. But at the same time, it just free up a lot of funds really for the rest of my team but i mean as of right now i'm just going to keep him and just play him because i might have a lot of other issues like say mikalenko's an issue saka potentially could be an issue semenyo is a little bit of an issue as well so there's, there's three players right there that i have th three free transfers for that i need to kind of sort out first so it's not the worst situation keeping Trent, but obviously I, I don't expect him to get many clean sheets over the next few. Chelsea, I don't think he will. Arsenal, I don't think he will. Brighton will be a tough game as well. Villa will be a tough game. And then obviously the Southampton fixture is really nice. But I don't know. We'll see what happens. But that's kind of the defence this week. It's very... I don't know. I'm not expecting a lot, really. Like, maybe one clean sheet from Milenkovic. But that's kind of it. It's one of those, really. It could go either way. Uh, but that's the defence. And the goalkeeper from my game week eight team. Moving on to midfield, we have Mbumo, who's got Man United away. We've got Cole Palmer, who's got Liverpool away, who, by the way, did not play well uh, for England last night, or did, definitely one of the worst games I've seen him play. So hopefully he can get that out of his system before he uh, starts back for Chelsea. But uh, yeah, Liverpool away for Palmer. Again, I do have an attacker playing a defender in Palmer versus Trent, but at the same time, Trent can potentially get an attacking return, so obviously I'm fine with that. I understand playing an attacker against the defender just limits the points potential, but at the same time, it when when you've got a player like Trent, he's, he's more of a midfielder in my opinion. Like The clean sheet is just a bonus anyway. Uh, and then I've also got Saka, who's got Bournemouth away, but of course did limp off. I think he had like a knock or something, and then he tried to like run it off, and then it looked like he'd gone down with some sort of hamstring injury. I think it was like Greece's first goal or something like that. Um, so yeah, that needs to be assessed. Obviously, it's a while until the game week eight deadline. We have another fixture on Saturday or Sunday um, with England, so we'll see how 
that goes, see if he starts or not. We might get an update by then as well. But obviously, if it is some sort of hamstring injury, we'll have to start looking at that uh, replacement. But again, I'll talk about that in the transfer uh, portion of the video anyway. So, um, yeah, Saka's got Bournemouth away. Uh, Rogers, who's got Fulham away, which I'm obviously absolutely fine playing. Uh, and then I've also got Semenya, who's got Arsenal at home. So, yeah, the Semenyo situation isn't ideal. I don't really want Semenyo in the team for the next three. McNeil is a really, really good replacement for him because obviously McNeil is going to have Ipswich away, Fulham at home, and then Southampton away instead of Semenyo having Arsenal at home, Villa away, and then City at home. And then I can think about bringing back in Semenyo when he has Brentford away, Brighton at home, stuff like that. So again, another transfer that I'm thinking of kind of toying with, but the midfield looks okay, but still not anything crazy like there's there's a few away for i mean there's all they're all away fixtures apart from Semenyo, who obviously i don't even want to play this week so that's also not ideal so yeah this this could go very badly or very well i don't really it's one of the i mean obviously it can go that way any week but um yeah i'm more i'm more worried than um confident this week i would say from from my defense and my midfield really uh, and then obviously up top we have a calvert lewin who's got ipswich away and then Harland, who's my current captaincy, who's got Wolves away, um, did score, I think, a brace last night or something. And then, obviously, he's also just shared the news that he's going to be a dad. So, hopefully, that adds a bit of fire to his uh, goal threat going into that Wolves away fixture. So, yeah, I mean, Wolves have been terrible defensively this season. So, I'm always going to back Harland. I know he's just blanked twice in a row, but we all know what he can do. We all know he's capable of scoring hat-tricks for fun. So, absolutely fine playing Harland as my captain this week. And then on the bench, we've got Ward, who's got Bournemouth away, uh, but obviously, uh, no, Southampton away, should I say, but obviously doesn't play anyway. Uh, Mikolenko, who's got Ipswich away, potentially injured. If it turns out that he's fine, I, I could be swayed to play him over Gabriel, but I don't know. I think I'll just still stick with the double Arsenal defence. Uh, Mikolenko should be fine by the week after where I probably want to play him, because I probably won't play double Arsenal defence against Liverpool at home. Um, I'd, I'd probably play Mikolenko, who's got Fulham at home in that fixture, if he's obviously fine. Uh, I've also got Greaves, who's got Everton at home, which is an all right fixture, but obviously I've got Calvert-Lewin, so I don't really want to play him against him. And then I've also got Strand Larson, who after this week, I'm, I'm obviously fine playing him in any of the weeks, really. They've got some really nice fixtures coming up. You know, Crystal Palace at home, Southampton at home, to name a few. I don't mind playing Strand Larson in those fixtures. So that's what the team looks like. Um, again, on paper, not ideal. I've only got uh, like two home fixtures because obviously I'm probably going to get rid of Semenyo. So not great. Uh, there, there, there are some pretty good fixtures in there, but at the same time, it's, it doesn't look like a crazy healthy um, healthy team this week. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of red, you know, on, on, on the uh, on the team this week in terms of fixtures. But that's how I'm currently shaping up for game week eight. If I go into the uh, the transfers though, this is the sort of situation that we're working with. So I have 0 0.1 mil in the bank. I've got a healthy three transfers, which is very nice. Never had this many transfers before, obviously, because it's only been this season where you're allowed to save more than two. So. Let's kind of break down what my decisions are. So, first of all, I'd like to get rid of Semenyo for McNeil. I think I'm going to just make that decision anyway. And I know going into game week eight with three uh, with three Everton players isn't really ideal. There's just nobody else that I really want for the next three to replace Semenyo. If I could bench him, I would. But I've got Strad Larson, who's got City at home. I mean, I may end up just playing Semenyo anyway. I might just save it. and Because after that, I can play Strad Larson for the next two and just bench Semenyo regardless. So maybe it'll just save that transfer. So it might be something that I kind of look at and just... I probably won't play Semenyo this week because I don't really want him scoring against my double Arsenal defence. But Strad Larson, who's got City at home, could be a bit of a hero and, and get a goal. I don't really think it's going to happen, but... Is it worth the transfer to McNeil? Because then, I'll, if I'm going to transfer Semenyo back, it's kind of saving, it's, it's kind of wasting two transfers when you think about it like that. And also, McNeil has gone up to 5.7, so he will be all of my money gone. Whereas if I need to get rid of Mikolenko for someone like Eight Nori, I wouldn't be able to make that move. So now that I'm actually talking through it and kind of thinking about it, I might just have to bite the bullet and play, you know, Semenyo or Strand Larson this week, who both have a terrible fixture. But then again, City have been very leaky. They have been very, very leaky. I know the Wolves haven't been great either, but you never know. Strand Larson could be an absolute hero and grab a goal. Could be one of those fairy tale stories where you're not expecting anything and then he comes out and bags of race. In, in a perfect world, that happens. But yeah, if, if that's the case, I'll probably just play Strand Larson. So that'll just obviously keep my three uh, transfers intact. So if Sun is, uh, if Saka is out, if it is a hamstring injury, I don't really mind getting rid of him because 
after the Bournemouth game, he's got Liverpool, Newcastle, and Chelsea. So I obviously don't mind getting rid of Saka and then bringing him back in for uh, whoever I uh, obviously bring him in for. Take him out for, should I say. So the biggest options, really, I've got 10.1 mil in the bank. Uh, one player that I could obviously bring in is, you know, Madison, if Sun is out. Uh, Madison is only 7.5. I, I probably wouldn't use that money elsewhere just because I know I'm going to want to bring some back in. But Madison does have some really nice fixtures coming up. Um, so I, I don't mind that. Obviously, in a perfect world, I have Sun because he's on penalties, everything like that. I think if Sun is fine, this will be my transfer because West Ham at home and then Crystal Palace, <laughs> Villa, Ipswich. It, it's not a terrible fixtures at all. And then when he's got City away is when Reyes, well, when Arsenal's got Forest home. So I can easily just re transfer in Saka around then so I'll keep Sun for the next four that's that's my ideal transfer that's what I would really like to do because I do want some Spurs players just because the fixture run is pretty nice over the next four so that's in a perfect world that's my transfer it does get me an extra point one I think that Saka will go down as well if he is injured especially with a hamstring injury as well again Sun has this hamstring injury now he's so we don't we, we need an update on him obviously international breaks come at a good time for him because he can just rest and recover but that's one transfer that I, I definitely want to make um, so that, and then I'd probably just do that this week and then just kind of, I mean, the other thing is I could always get rid of Strand Larson, but there's no reason to do that because he's obviously fine after that. So that's what I will probably do this week. And that would be my game week, um, eight transfer. So I still have two frees left and then going into next week, I'd have three again. After that, if Mikalenko's still out, I'll probably take a look at bringing eight Nori in. If Mikalenko's fine, then obviously I can just play him. Because like I said, I don't want to play double Arsenal defence. And I don't really want to play Greaves, who's got Brentford away. Because obviously I have Mbumo. So we'll, we'll kind of visit that next week. But And then, I mean, I don't mind playing Semenya, who's got Villa away, to be fair. That's not a terrible fixture. But Brighton away is probably a little bit better for Strand Larson. But yeah, that's kind of the, the thought process at the moment. I, I thought about getting rid of Semenya, but now I've spoken about it. It's not probably worth the two transfers because it's not exactly like a, a really high-class player that's going to be getting me points most weeks anyway. So, yeah, it might just be... And, and, and that Saka for Sun move, you know, probably is only if he's injured. Like, I'll probably... I'll, I'll just keep Saka regardless if, if he's fine. So it might even just be another roll, to be fair. Do I really just roll with three transfers and then just have four next week? I mean, it's basically a mini wild card at that point if I have four free transfers. Because then after that, I'm going to have to start using transfers because I can't roll more than five. So, I don't know. We'll see what happens. We'll obviously update the wait for the Saka news. But yeah, Saka out for Sun. 100% if uh, Sun is fine and Saka's injured. But again, we'll have to wait for information on that. And then, yeah, potentially get rid of Trent and bring Solanke in. But again, I, that's just kind of tearing up my whole team. And I don't think I really, really want to do that. So, that's kind of my thought process. The team selection, all that jazz for game week eight. Uh, obviously, we have another week of international break to go. So, I'll go over like an updated wildcard draft and everything like that. Team selection next week. But thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, drop a like. Leave a comment. Subscribe if you're brand new. Ring the notification bell. It's everything from me. Have a great rest of your day. And until next time, peace.